it anywhere, bro. Can you imagine, Brody, just traveling in one of these instead of our campers? Why don't, why don't we do it? Yeah, we'll probably save. We'll, we'll just put a gym in the back instead well, of carrying horses. Well, if we switch to one of those, like, Scotty-type deals, but it's a newer one, it'd be like that. Yeah. You've been rodeoing. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It's been good, bro. How is it? Have you done... Uh, you need should do Casey Field. I haven't... I haven't... I didn't introduce myself. I've he's, never been I'll there. introduce you today. That would be cool. He's one of the coolest guys, dude. He's very well-spoken, yeah. very professional. Yeah. Like, and he's at a spot in his career where he's won everything, and he's kind of like getting out of rodeos and he has like all these other opportunities opening up and it, it's it's pretty neat yeah i watch all his uh youtube videos he's got yeah. his contents rank he's got it's good dope. content yeah are we rolling uh, yeah okay roll. cool cool um introduce yourself um lefty holman saddle bronc rider i come from a rodeo family uh rodeo rodeos everything in our family dude like growing up instead of watching football baseball which I played a little bit of baseball too. I was named after Lefty Frizzell, but rodeo was everything, you know. And growing up watching the NFR, I wanted to rope calves. I wanted to be a calf rope. And I was I was decent at it, but I just I was I was super small in high school, and I just couldn't really compete at the level I wanted to. So I was like, I need I need to do something else, and I wanted to win an all around title, which was like everything for me because my sister at the time was winning all the all rounds. I just wanted to be cool like my sister, right? So I was like, I need to get on the bucking horse. And I fell in love with it instantly, dude. Like the first, I'll never forget. I was in Paso Robles, California, at a high school rodeo. Told my dad, hey, I want to start riding bucking horses. By the time we got home from the Paso Robles rodeo grounds, there was a bucking shoot at my house and a practice horse from the three hours, like my dad, my dad is the best dad in the world, you know, like whatever, if I say I wanted to play chess right now, he would find out how I'm gonna become the best chess player. <laughs> you know, he's he's the best dad, With without him I, I would not be here, but we got home from that high school rodeo and there was a buck and shoot and a practice horse and I was like, oh shit, like I'm gonna have to get on this practice horse now, you know? <laughs> and um, the next day they ran him in, it was a perfect little practice horse and from that moment on, I, I fell in love with it, you know, and I just wanted to put everything into it. I still roped calves for the next year. I won the state championship, which was cool, but I still just never got that that buzz or that high, or like like I did riding bucket horses. And to this day, I still get that same exact feeling when I get on my bucket horse. And you get on on the highest levels at the NFR, or the American, you know, it's when you get off and make a good ride, it's it's the best feeling in the world. That, that's what I'm addicted to you know when you get off and the crowd goes wild you throw your hands in the air and you're 90 points or or make a good ride you know it's it's the best feeling in the world and that's that's why I'm obsessed with this game that's why I love Rand Buck and Horses that's why I do it to this day it's freaking good <laughs> yeah this interview is gonna be good I already tell bro you're <laughs> shit, <bring> yeah. <laughs> what uh so you started in high school so mm -hmm. I mean in my mind your I mean, if you're getting your, you probably got your rookie card 18, 19. Yep, 18. So, I mean, there's a small window to where you got to a high skill level. Yeah, like, when I first started, I was, I was talented at it, and I knew I was talented at it. Like, I could stay on, you know, which, when you just start, that's saying something. Like, if you just stay on at the high school rodeos, you're going to win. I had just started my senior year, and I won the state championship that year, and I also won it in the calf roping. But I didn't really, I wasn't obviously at, at the level I wanted to get to. And then uh, my first year of college, I'll never forget, I went to Cuesta College in San Luis Obispo. Was living the good life, you know, living the college life. And I, I was just kind of plateaued, like yeah, I wasn't getting any better. And um, I told my dad I needed to get to the next level. Well, the next day I got a phone call from Bradley Harder, which he's made the NFR 11 times. One of the goats in the Bronco Ryan world, you know. And he called me and said, hey, if you if you want to be a world champion one day, you need to come down to Louisiana, and I'll get you there. So literally that next day, I had a moving, a moving truck show up to my house, packed up all my shit out of my college dorm, got out of there, flew to Louisiana the next week, and started winter rodeo. And, and like, I was not competing at a high level at all you know I was only riding buck horses for two years at that point I was getting bucked off everywhere but I was just learning you know and I thank God every day for Bradley Harder he he helped me with everything whether it was in the arena or going to church like he's all around one of the best humans on the planet and like I still talk to him every day 
every day pretty well. He's like my best friend. He's like my second dad, you know, and he cares for me so much. But um, so I traveled with him and Joey Sonier for my rookie year. I won second, second for the rookie, rookie. What's what's it called? Rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. I won second, and um, Dawson Hay beat me. That fucking drove me nuts, man. And I didn't really know Dawson at the time, and. Um, a year later, you know, he started hanging around my cousin Lily, which is his wife now. And Lily's my first cousin, but she's more like a sister to me. Um, so, like, I remember he flew down to San Luis Obispo, and we got to, me and Dawson got to hang. I'm kind of rambling here, but um, good, all bro. these memories are coming You're back. Good, <laughs> but, um, yeah, Dawson came, came down, and, um, man, like, he's been like my brother ever since then. You know, he's, he's one of the most amazing humans and a phenomenal competitor. Like, my style and Dawson's style are the complete opposite. Like, he's very wild, like, sporadic. You never know if he's going to get bucked off or be 90 points. He's either going to be 90 and get a great check or get bucked off. That's his style. And my style is the complete opposite, you know. So I've, I've learned a lot from Dawson. And, like, just being around him has, has helped me a lot in my career. And my, I'm just so lucky with my family. Like, Dakota Eldridge is my uncle. He's one of the goats in the bulldog. And, and um even though it's a complete different event everything's the same you know like just from the mindset to the work ethic to saying fuck it and going and getting on the ones you don't want to like that guy's a warrior to go to like he's, he's a dog he's helped me so much in my career um i could sit here and just name off people that have helped me in so much in my career but I, i'm super lucky I want to hit. You said your style. You mm -hmm. said about talk about those style. So if he's wild and sporadic, are you? Would you say you're consistent and consistent? Yeah, I wouldn't. He's just wild, dude. Like yeah. he, he'll be he'll be in a four man and have to beat one guy, and he's gonna let it hang out every single time. I like to be consistent, and it. I don't. I don't want to say I like to be. It's just the way I ride Bronx. You know, like I, I've always rode Bronx. Everyone has their own. Like Brody over here, he's one of the most consistently great guys in the game. And it's like everyone has their own. Same in the calf roping, you know, their own style. You could call it. Well, Dawson's style is. I'm gonna. I don't give a shit if I get one jump. I want to win. You know, and in my mind, you know, I I watch the I. I watch it and see what I need to do to win you know like I'm I, want, I don't want to say conservative but conservative you know pay pay attention know what I need to do and then there's guys like like Brody that picture perfect you know like lifts on his rain picture per and it's just like then Zeke you know like you, you, everybody knows Zeke Zeke's a goat he's possibly one of the best bronc riders to ever walk the earth you know and it's just like i like watching guys like that because i i could kind of compare myself to zeke you know zeke zeke rides very correct and um i don't want to sound like a dick comparing myself to zeke zeke's one of the best ever but you know that's that's how i want to be like that bronc rider oh, yeah. that's good yeah this is good stuff, bro. This is freaking good, dude. You're bringing well, I'm it. just rambling. No, up here. but like, you're, uh, this is good, dude. Yeah, shit, yeah. Kyle was like, bro, Lucky's gonna be a good interview, dude. You can do it, too. I want you to picture yourself. I don't know if you have like a favorite like ride of your career. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. How old are you? This is your 24. Fourth, so this fourth year or fifth year? Fifth year. Fifth year. Yeah. So in your five years, you can just think of the one. You can bring it up if you want. You don't have to. But if there's one ride that comes to mind in particular, and I want you to describe like what it's like riding a Bronc for people who've never done it. Dude, it's so hard to explain. Like, yeah, because it looks out of control, but in that moment when that horse is breaking over, bucking, standing in one spot, you feel totally in control, and it just feels like it all. It feels like you're just floating through the air, and when you're ahead of one. When you're ahead of one, it's it's almost easy, you know. It's it's like effortless, and when they're breaking over and kicking over their head, and you're lifting on your rein the right way, oh man, I, I you can't even explain it. Just because it's it's really is the best feeling in the world. And when you get off on the pickup, man, crowd goes wild. Even you could be in the Thomas and Mac, or you could be at a thousand dollar rodeo in Arkansas, you know. And it, when you have that feeling, it doesn't matter where you're at, how much money you're riding for, it's 
it's th those moments, you know, like those are the moments I'll remember forever is when you, when you get off and you know you aced one and it's was felt easy, you know, even it doesn't matter how hard they're bucking. If you're riding them the right way, it, it feels easy, you know, which it's never always been like that. But um, it's it's the best feeling in the world. It, it honestly does feel like you're just floating through the air and they're kicking over their head and you, you could my favorite bronc rides is like you could hear the crowd or you could hear the announcer like going like that's how clear your mind is going out through there you know just because you're you're in that zone you know and then there's also times where you don't remember your ride because it's a blur and that's when you're struggling which we all go through that you know shit the best in the world go through that i went through that two weeks ago you know i might go through it another two weeks you know that's rodeo it's so up and down and um when you think you have the sport figured out it'll humble you, you know, right away. It's gonna humble you right away. And um, that, I think that's why we love the sport so much. And I think that's why we get so obsessed with it because whenever you think you have it figured out, it seems like it's never gonna end, you know? It seems like it's just gonna last forever, but it's not, you know? One of my favorite quotes is, um, this too shall pass. You know, it's, it, it's a Bible quote. And I always tell myself that every day, whether you're at a high in the Thomas Mack winning win and go rounds or you can't spur one out or you can't get past the end of the gate you're getting bucked off you know i always tell myself this too shall pass and that kind of keeps me level and that keeps me thankful for those highs and um, gives me hope in the lows as well christian dudes who are uh competing at a high level bro it's 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 inspiring yeah. so and i love watching all your stuff because you know you you add god into that and it's like for the kids that are 10 11 12 sitting at home and when they see their heroes like that's that could help them turn them yeah. to god and because that's what turned me to god you know which i've always been i was raised catholic like i always believed in like god went to church but like you have to figure it out on your own you know you, everyone does and and for for me that was when i moved to louisiana and lived with bradley harder like i grew up going to church like all that which but uh, you have to learn on your own, which whenever I moved to Louisiana, Bradley kind of taught me that. And I just wanted to be like him. And I always see him praying and I'm like, wow, this must work. Well, and then you start praying about it and like good things start happening. And you're like, wow, like this, this, this is amazing. And um, it, it's just, life is so full circle, man. It, it's amazing. Let's go, bro. Yeah. Do you have a specific, I think, I'm kind of curious now. I told you you didn't have to bring it up, but I'm mm -hmm. kind of curious. Do you have a specific ride in the last five years? Oh yeah, sorry. I didn't hear no, you're that. good. I told you you didn't have to say it. But so, I'm so I got one that kind of like helped get my career started. Is my rookie year in 2019 was Reno Rodeo, and I I won the rodeo. But my my dad and my family, my whole family flew out to the short round, and I was coming back sixth or seventh. Like I was, I, I didn't have really no I had a shot to win the Reno Rodeo right but for some reason my my family flew out just because it was like the one of the first big rodeos I made the short round and like like I said earlier I have the best family in the world and I remember behind the shoots and I had a horse called Cool Toddy which is known to be one of the best flying fly horses in the world you know she's like older than me she's been around forever and I remember imagining winning they my family surprised me so like I got behind the shoots and they surprised me and it was time to tape up so they left or whatever and I remember sitting there taping up and imagining winning the rodeo with my family there and I just started tearing up behind the chutes and like I hadn't even rode I didn't even really think I had a shot and I'd be like man that'd be so cool to win win this with my family you know like if, if my family was here you know I, I wouldn't really think twice about it but you know my whole family was there they had flew out it was my brother's birthday my little brother's birthday and um, I just started tearing up, and I'm like, man, this is weird. I'm getting, I don't know why I'm getting emotional about this. Well, Cool Toddy stalled the first time. They rolled her, and my I remember looking up at my grandpa, and he just said to me, "All you got to be is you." So I get back in there, and I'm like, just thinking that all I got to do is all I got to be is me. I'm like, all right, well, I don't really, I don't really get it. But that gate opens, horse goes out there, stays in one spot. She was great buzzer rings I go to throw my hat while I'm still on the bucking horse th throw it into the stands fall off after the whistle and they announce they announce my score I was 89 and a half beat Wade Sundell by a half a point which 
he's one of my heroes, you know, growing up watching Wade Sundell, he's world champion, you know, that was huge for me as a 19 year old kid. And I remember sitting on the back of the buck and shoots and there was two more guys to go and I'm not even really thinking I had a shot still to win it. Like I was just like, it was just a blur, you know, shit was happening so fast. And um, the last guy went and they said, Lefty, you gotta go into the arena. And I thought, maybe I just won the round. Well, I ended up winning the average and the round. And um, I remember l looking over to the right and my whole family was right there. And I was like, wow, you know, like, and for me, that was probably the most amazing win of my career. Even though it wasn't the biggest win of my career, just knowing that all the work I'd put in, my my dad supported me, and looking over and seeing seeing all of them right there, man, that was that was a special one for me. Yeah, Reno Rodeo 2019. <laughs> yeah, man, that was that was a special one. That one kind of jump started my career. I almost made the NFR in 2019. I ended up getting hurt, blew my knee out in Cheyenne, but. Um, that one was pretty special. I want you to explain the Pialop, Sioux Falls, Pendleton, last, I mean, you know, there's up to $70,000 a guy could win. Yeah. For the guys at the very top, it could be the difference between a gold buckle. For the guys who are a bubble, it could be the difference between putting them in the position top five, top three, and the guys trying to make top fifteen. Right. I mean, this this is like a very it's huge huge game. opportunity. Just ex if you were explaining this last two week sprint mm -hmm. to somebody who didn't know, what would you say? Stressful. <laughs> it's stressful. It doesn't matter really where you're at. If you're anywhere from twenty fifth in the world to sixth in the world, like. A lot of shit could change right like this is and uh, it's hard to explain because we haven't experienced it yet really like we've had Pialop in the past but we haven't had Sioux Falls so like we really don't know how it's gonna play out because we're used to it this time of the year if you're in the top 15 you kind of have a clue who's making the finals right and if, right now like the guy that's 25th right now he he could possibly make the NFR and bump out whoever you know so right now where I'm at I got 120,001. I'm 12th in the world. Um, I'm not safe by any means. So like, it it's you don't want to fight your head because you know you just got to go do your job. But at the same point, it's 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 stressful, you know. But it's great to see the sport growing in that. I feel like every year the sport gets better and better, and it's becoming I don't want to say a real sport, but a real sport. You know, it's it's and these guys are dogs out here, Cole. These guys are dogs, man. The top top thirty guys in the world are they could win any round at the NFR. Like it just depends on the horse and the guy's day. Same in the calf rope, I'm sure. Like it's but man, the Sioux Falls deal, which we haven't experienced it yet, so we don't really know how much it could change, but we know it could change a lot. It's cool. Yeah. It's what wild. happened last night? Man, oh, oh, my freaking hamstring cramped up in the shoe. Your hand? I thought it was your hand. I no, my hamstring, dude. I went to pull my leg back. It was the worst cramp, man. If it ha would have happened to anyone else, like Brody Kress or Zeke Thurston, they'd still be in there, man. They, they, they're not as near as tough as me. I'm probably one of the toughest guys going. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I've, I've never had that happen before, and I've heard people, like, I'm sure you've got a bad cramp before. Think about think about get, getting on a bucking horse. That's already scary, right? Yeah. In front of how many people were there last night? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah, in front of ten thousand people, and you gotta you got judges, and people telling you, and you got cameras gotta, on you, cameras right? on you, and you gotta. Lefty, the biggest smile. He said the biggest smile in the world. And I'm just ah, <laughs> dude, I got a cramp. No, it was horrible. Yeah. Sucked. <laughs> yeah, I think I I think I got video. I was trying to video this guy, and they're like, "What happened?" And he turns around. And my, I'm pointing my camera at him, and he goes, "He's cramping." <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm praying. I haven't looked at the footage yet, but I'm praying you can hear what he's saying. And it oh, I hope out, so, dude. That that was be horrible. Perfect. I'll tell you what, though, if it would have happened to anyone else but me, they'd still be in that shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, bro. Yeah. What uh, I guess uh, I guess the next question I want you to ask is like, for a guy like you, what f goals? For the remainder of the season, mm -hmm. so like you have, I mean, there's a lot of money left to be won yep. in two weeks. You have a place where you want to be. And yeah. So I have, I have nine rodeos left. So 
My goal, Cole, is to win $1,000 every time I nod my head because here and there you're going to win 3000 4000 But if you could just win every time you nod your head, you're going to make the NFR. So that's that's always my goal from the start of the season, you know, win, just win every time you nod, you know, don't, don't ride for free. I hate riding for free. When you go to a rodeo and you don't get a check, I don't care if it's for $250 or if it's for 10,000, you know, don't ride for free, you know, so that's always my theory. So for the rest of the season, that's, I'm going to just keep, keep doing that. Just win, win every time you nod your head which I've got some good horses drawn. We've got a lot of money to be won still. It's wild how much money there is out there. You know, you could win so much in, in this final month of the season, which is crazy because it rodeo's just growing so much and so much every single year, which with guys like you bringing more sponsors to the sport, more money, like it's changing the game of rodeo for the better. And I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of it, man. It's, it's an honor. Far, dude, that's epic, bro. I want to. So, what's the top you finished at the NFR? Have you been to two or one? Uh, two. I was the reserve world champion last year, so I won. Res you had second last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I well, won. Well, explain. Explain that. Yeah, it, that was awesome, man. I came in fifth in the world. Um, knew I had a shot. I had about a hundred. Uh, Sage Newman had a hundred thousand dollar lead on me. So you know, you know, you got a shot because there's so much money at the NFR, but. Man, $100,000 is a lot, you know, especially going into trying to beat guys like Sage Newman, you know, freaking one of the most phenomenal bronc riders in the world. Um, but it's just all it is is getting rolling out there, man. You know, I got rolling out there. I won the second round. I won the third round. Um, I placed I placed every night. Um, every, every round I got a check. In the, I think the seventh round or the eighth round, I missed a horse out, which possibly could have cost me a world title. Um, just depending on what my score would have been, but you can't really look at that type of shit. You know, it was an it was an honor to be a reserve world champion. Brody's won reserve world champion a couple times. Um, you can't really look at that type of stuff. You know, it's it's um, it's an honor to be there with the top guys in the world. Whether you win ten dollars that week or two hundred thousand, you know, it's it's an honor to be there. So I try to keep keep an clear mind and just relax out there because it's so much pressure pressure as you know you know it's you got so many eyes on you and it seems like you have so many people when you get off your bronc you got 15 text messages or and, and everybody knows something it seems like so you just have to have your small group of buddies you know for me i got three or four guys i got my dad and my wife you know and like those are the people i talk to bradley harder being one of them just because it's overwhelming you know you could really get caught up in the noise and all the people telling you and like it's it's an honor for people trying to help you and all that but at the same time it's like you got to stay in your own lane and do do what you got to do but everybody wants to be a part of that journey especially when you get winning it seems like you get a lot of people wanting to be a part of that journey or if you're losing you know they want to they want to help you out of it which is a blessing but i think you have to stay in your own mind and just just go do your job man this is our job you know <laughs> this is what we do for a living and and um we're so lucky to have people that care enough about us that want to help but i think just staying focused keeping a quiet mind not for me it's not going out to the bars every night it's you know going back to my hotel room door dashing some taco bell or, or some food or, and just just relaxing and just treating it like another rodeo because that's what we do all year yeah it takes a level of uh maturity i mean you're yeah. 25 but understanding mm -hmm. like because you get these young guys out here going first second and four mm -hmm. or Anybody it doesn't have to be a young guy. It can be any guy. They're all dogs, cool. They're I know that's what I'm dogs. saying. <laughs> and, but the, the asset of uh, or the, the part of it of being all these voices in your head takes a level of understanding, mm -hmm. like who you're gonna listen to. Drive it could drive you crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Especially that week, that ten days. It's a it's a wild ass ten days, and it could go amazing, or it could be the longest ten days of, the, of your life. You know, but For real. Um, at the end of the day. We got the best jobs in the world. We get to do something we love day in and day out and ride bucking horses. You know, it's, it. I mean, we're in the Northwest right now. Like, it's 75 degrees outside. It's a good day. You know, we're so blessed to be out here. And and um, it's really easy to get sour. A lot, you hear a lot of guys getting sour, but 
um, you just have to remind yourself, you're so lucky. You know, God, we're so lucky to be out here with our buddies traveling the world. Man, you can't beat it. Last question. What is it going to take you... What, what is it going to take for you to ultimately accomplish your goal to be world champion and get a gold buckle one day? That's all I want is that gold buckle. I'll be done after I get a gold buckle. I don't care. <laughs> I just I just really want a gold buckle one day. And um, I think it's just keeping, keeping God at number one in our life. I think it's the most important thing. Keeping your priorities straight. It's so easy to get distracted out here. You know, and the devil, the devil tempts you every single day. As, as you guys know, but um, I think just staying focused and, and staying thankful for me and not getting sour. And um, I love getting into the gym every day and working out and just putting in that 1% every single day just to get better. And for me, if I put in that work, I feel like the sport rewards you in certain ways. You know, if you're disciplined and you put in that work, I always, I always think the sport rewards you and we've seen a lot of that so for me it's it's just staying focused putting in the work doing whatever I got to do to be a good human and a great competitor every day <laughs> that's it I think buddy hanging out with guys like you <laughs> dude I appreciate you doing this, dude, this is I've been wanting to do this for a while dude this is awesome thanks for having me dude. it was a blast because so I got so y'all gonna be Brody? If you want to do one, bro, in Pendleton, yeah. obviously yeah. today because y'all about to, you're about to have to go. Y'all are always up there like it. We're we're gonna we'll be there the 13th, and we got we got a couple <laughs> yeah. days off, so we'll just be in touch. Brody's he'll we're be with go, me. Hang out with Kenwick and golf. And yes, yeah. so we'll be right close to everything. Yeah, you guys bro. should do one. Because Brody's I was, got a fucking pretty sweet story. He's one of the average fuck ton of time. One of the goats. How old are you? <laughs> 27. He's, 27. An old, he's an old dog. So say, bro, you don't, I was talk, asking, telling Zeke that it, there's not that many 30 plus guys no. right now. Right now, there's but Isaac's the only one in the chase yep. to make the finals. It's that old. Yep. Like last, year, last year, the oldest guy we had at the finals was 29, 28, or yep. 29 is all. Is it athleticism? I mean, is it a young man's sport? Or? I do think it is starting to get to be that change of like. I guess for some guys still being at a good age and for other guys like actually picking up working out and doing stuff you know because there's a lot of young guys that ride good right now that probably don't work out I don't want to say they don't because I don't know but that probably don't work out you know and then there's a group of us that work out pretty seriously and it's never been like that cool like Brody was the first guy to work out in the Bronc Riders, and now well, well Jacobs, we, Jacobs, and yeah. those guys did. But you were like, one yeah. of the you were one of like the first. our age groups, kind mm -hmm. of the first like group to actually. And now that it's serious. it's probably half the Bronc Riders at least that are in the gym taking this because nowadays you get rich riding bucking horses. You could do pretty well. It's it's not like it used to be. It used to be they go to the beer tent and party, and now it's like. Like I said earlier, dogs. <laughs> He's a dog. He's a dog. He's a dog. <laughs> you know, it's all dogs. <laughs> Bro, but like out at Pinoco, Pinoco's Instagram posted a, a, I think it was the bareback riders of like Leighton Barry and all these mm -hmm. bareback riders freaking doing band, band warm ups, yep. high knees, stretch, like these elaborate stretches. Mm -hmm. And I think their caption was along the lines of, it's a different breed. It uh, is, dude. And it's, it's crazy. Yeah. For sure. P car. Z Thurston just called. Shit, yeah. Well, we're all good, my man. We're good, bro. That was a blast. Let's That's do it again, fun, dude. Let's you know, do it again. Maybe Let's, do it again in Hawaii, huh? Yeah, dude. Come whenever you want. Just tell me. Tell me in, in a week in advance. Fly down there. I got a place.